It's a great pleasure to have Dr. Richard Lippmann, who's come an awful long way. He's come all the way from the beautiful islands of Hawaii to come and visit us in cloudy UK. So we do welcome him. Good afternoon to you. Oh, thank you, Phil. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. Dr. Lippmann, for those who don't know, is a pioneer in the field of anti-aging research. Very prominently, he's been nominated for the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his free radical research. Um, and what's fabulous about Dr. Lippmann, he's a strong advocate and follower of the latest um, health products and protocols. And we're going to be talking a little bit today about that, about what you've been doing, and focusing a little bit on your amazing free radical research. So if I may, Dr. Lippmann, maybe start with a, a basic question. Could you tell us what's a free radical? Um, a free radical is, technically speaking, is an un is an, is an extra electron on a molecule that very readily uh, spits off from the molecule to, an, to another molecule. And if it, if it spits off to a molecule that's, your, that's part of your living cells, they could be damaged by that. And an example of that is the flow of electricity, where, where copper atoms, they spit off electrons and they, in a, in a bucket brigade fashion, the, the electron transfers along these copper atoms namely an electric wire mm -hmm. to from one to from the it's from one beginning to end and 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 you get energy that's transferred by the spitting off of electron. Well the same thing happens to your body that, that energy is transferred and that energy could be for the positive as with an electric wire or it could be the negative when with an electrocution. Thank you Dr. Lippmann, that's interesting. Of course I think a lot of people will know that there is both the free radical theory of aging, which of course was developed by the um, great Denham Harnham back in the 1950s. I was wondering though, where typically in the body do free radicals form? Is there any specific region where? Yes, it's, it's formed in, in the energy factories of every cell. The energy factories are called mitochondria. And um, it's a mitochondria typically takes up nutrients and, and burns oxygen and, and it makes, makes the energy that the cells use, namely ATP, and a byproduct of making this, this, this ATP is free radicals, a very tiny, tiny byproduct. And for example, we burn, we, we, we inhale, we inhale pounds of oxygen every day, but of, the, of those pounds, only a tiny amount, grams, grams are converted into free radicals which the body has to do something with. Thank you, and of course we know that uh, free radicals can be very damaging. Um, is there any, are there any specific problems or disorders that free radicals have been linked with? Um, the wrinkling of skin, for one thing. Um, if you'll see the damage free radicals. Somebody who's a sun lover and goes out in the sun a lot and their, and their, their skin and face becomes uh, leathery-like, mm -hmm. and I think especially in Australians. That, that they know about the intensity of the sun and their leathery like skin they get in the outback and and I think that's the most significant and then of course we see this in our automobiles with the where we have to change the wiper blades mm -hmm. every so often because of the free radical damage to that rubber mm -hmm. or the, the sidewalls of tires mm -hmm. that that crack after a number of months due, due to free radical activity and the same the same effects happen to our arteries so our mm -hmm. arteries become hard and inelastic and begin to crack um, with aging mm -hmm. as a result of free radicals. I was wondering, Dr. Lippmann, um, are there any specific free radicals uh, that are more dangerous than other free radicals? And can't we simply uh, uh, scavenge, can't we simply neutralize free radicals with things in our diet and, and vitamin supplements? Is that possible? Yeah, that's true. It, it, a lot of free radicals are neutralized with, with our ordinary diet with, and by eating supplemental vitamin E and vitamin C. But, but some free radicals cannot be neutralized in, in the diet. Mm -hmm. and, and these are two specific types. One of them is the um, superoxide radical and the other one's the hydroxyl radical. Mm -hmm. Now the hydroxyl radical are these powerful radicals from nuclear radiation. That it, whenever there's there's nuclear a nuclear explosion, um, there's radioactive activity. You get these hydroxyl radicals. We have no defenses against that. Mm -hmm. Whatever it immediately um, hits our cells and does damage. Mm -hmm. And the lifespan of these hydroxyl radicals is nanoseconds, mm -hmm. as a nanosecond lifespan. So we have no defense against mm -hmm. this. On the other hand, we have other dangerous free radicals, the superoxide radical, the superoxide anion radical, mm -hmm. is what it's called technically. 
And we have a very effective enzyme system for this. That for, for the superoxide anion radical, we have superoxide dismutase, or SOD, and we have large amounts in the body. The problem is, if, if we exercise, if we do heavy aerobic exercise, um, our, our SOD only doubles in, in, in volume and in concentration, where, where we have eight times the amount of, of, um, of uh, superoxide being created by heavy exercise. Right. And so that we, it overpowers our, our defense, our lines of defense, our SOD, are overpowered, yes. and then our secondary lines of defense for example, glutathione, mm -hmm. that's also overpowered, and, and the result is we, we get damage. Okay, what kind of damage? Okay, we get DNA damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how does, the, how does the DNA damage get repaired? We have nice DNA enzymes that repair the DNA, mm -hmm. but with aging, we, we lose those enzymes. Mm -hmm. So we, we, really need to, we really need to not over-exercise, to do, do excessive amount of exercise, mm -hmm. and we need to do eat protective substances that that protect our DNA mm -hmm. and protect our other cellular machinery, like our the walls of our cells, mm -hmm. and um, um, you know. Yeah, I can see that being very important. Yes, sir. yes. We'll, we'll discuss a bit further what people can do to defend themselves. Yes. Them. So it's clear then we, if we want to live long and healthy lives, we've got to defend ourselves against some of these nasty free radicals like the superoxide radical. And I was wondering, uh, therefore, Dr. Lippman, what was it that led you to develop your own free radical scavenger supplement, the ACF228? Yeah, well, originally back in 1972, I, I read this article in the magazine by, by Professor Denham Harmon, which you've mentioned previously. And he, during the 50s, especially in 1956, he, um, he expanded the lifespan of, of lab mice by 50%. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this is amazing. I mean, how, how could this be? There must be something, something to this, that free radicals do, do impact aging. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I started studying medicine and chemistry, and, I, and I, I mean, as soon as I could, it's like I got the advanced degrees in Sweden, mm -hmm. I, I acquired my own mice colonies of, mm -hmm. of hundreds of mice, some rats, and, and also I had dogs that were pe dogs as pets. Mm -hmm. And I, I started using some of these substances that, that would scavenge, scavenge the, the free radicals. Mm -hmm. and, and that was my, my start in that, in that field. And, and I, could, I reproduced the results of Denim Harmon, and I wanted to know more. I happen to know, of course, that you called it ACF228 because it means anti-aging complete formula. And it was your 228th formula uh, that you came up with. Um, but tell me. What's unique about this formula in ACF228, please? Um, well, I, I developed instrumentation back in the late 70s and early 80s that would actually measure the results in humans, mm -hmm. non-invasively, in vivo, in humans, mm -hmm. um, the, the products of free radicals, namely lipid peroxides. Mm -hmm. And these lipid peroxides, I could measure them in humans, and I could feed these humans um, I could expose them to radiation, for example, and I could see their lipid peroxides rise. Mm -hmm. And then I, could, then I could give them radical scavengers and I could see the lipid peroxides fall. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could ch monitor these changes with this, this very sensitive information that I developed. Mm -hmm. and, and from that I could, I could do uh, thousands of experiments, thus the 228 formulations. I did thousands of experiments as to what would work best to to limit the, the lipid peroxides. And then I further confirmed this with, with clinical double-blind studies in humans and with animal studies in mice and with, with my own pets. Mm -hmm. It must have been very unique because I do not happen to know that you managed to get a patent on ACF228, which is quite extraordinary for a supplement. Yes, and um, yeah, I, I got this patent on it, and before I got that, um, I, I presented enough clinical documentation and animal studies to two different FDAs, to the Italian FDA and to the Swedish FDA separately, and both of them accepted this as an anti-aging product. And then when I received my patent from the American Patent um, and Trademark Office, it was, it was the only patent ever, ever granted to, to retard human aging. Wow. And, and normally those who have gone to law school and studied, studied patent law, they, they will tell you in your first year of law school, in fact, 
that there's two things you cannot patent. Mm -hmm. You can't patent a perpetual motion machine, and you can't patent a fountain of youth. Right. Well, I managed to <laughs> patent a fountain of youth, and, and there's a lot of scientists that didn't believe me on this, and as, as, as a response to this, um, later on in the late 90s and the, and the turn of the millennium, the, um, the um, National Institute of Aging, they, that was their number two um, uh, product that they wanted to test. They wanted to test what I had patented, namely this, this free radical scavenger, mm -hmm. the NDGA. Mm -hmm. They wanted to test this formally with government laboratories. There, I think there's six government laboratories that tested this with mice and longevity. And, and the six laboratories reported back to, to, to the NIA that it does retard aging to, to, an, average of, to, to an average of 6%. Wow. And of course, that was their government experiments. I mean, I believe you can get at least 20 to 30% out of this, but, but the government laboratories verified this, much to the surprise of all these skeptical scientists. That's really, that's really wonderful news, and uh, I know NDGA, of course, is one of the important ingredients in ACF228, and I suppose as you've conquered one of the patent uh, laws, we look forward to your perpetual motion machine later on. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you have a great deal of experience, Dr. Lippert, there's no, no question about that. So when it comes to using the ACF228, what do you recommend for most folks? How should they go about dosing it? Um, ideally, both with the hormones I use and, and with the ACF228, you should use it once with every meal, mm -hmm. one meal per supplement, since that's when you get a rise in metabolism, you get a rise in cortisol in the body, um, and it's convenient also. If you, you're eating food, you conveniently remember to take one tablet along with that, and also other, you know, other hormone supplements that you need along with it, like, for example, Time release DHEA. Well, thank you, Dr. Lippmann. I think we've touched on a very important subject, uh, the free radicals today. I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Phil.